Hi friends, from time to time at flea market, I looked for worthwhile old appliances which, even by today's standards, would be quite suitable to make such a cozy retro corner with all devices in my workshop. I already have a professional soldering station termite with thermal stabilization and replaceable tips, a digital multimeter electronics MMTs 0.1, all sorts of different analog multimeters, quite a good military analog oscilloscope C173. In addition, I have a few old laboratory power supplies, but they are bulky and not very convenient and also weak. I've been looking for a laboratory power supply for a long time, which would be more or less compact, provide stabilization for both current and voltage. I came to the conclusion that something from the B5 line, or rather B5 to 47, would be suitable. In principle, in our area, it is possible to find such in good condition, but rarely. Recently, I was fabulously lucky. On the website of a local internet flea market, I came across an ad for the sale of just such a source for only about 50 bucks. And most importantly, the source is in a new condition, one might say almost from storage. I found the seller and clarified details about the working condition and also whether this block was ever opened. The fact is that it has a certain amount of precious metal and probably someone had a bite or replaced components. The device, judging by the words of the owner, was never opened and turned on only a couple of times. The seller was completely honest, I was convinced of this after examining the unit. Here it is, our handsome B5-47, a laboratory DC source which was used in serious places. A device of a high level of complexity with a very unusual control method and what is most interesting, it is pulsed. All the seals are in place, the condition is very worthy considering the 30 year age. It was produced in 1990 at the Abovian plant Izmaritev in the Armenian SSR. All sources with this circuit from this line have one drawback, they are noisy, because the operating frequency of the generator is low and in the audible range. The noise level varies depending on the operating mode of current or voltage stabilization as well as on the load power. Another drawback is that it cannot be set to 0 volt 0 mA and many of these blocks even had a corresponding inscription on the front panel. Even if this inscription isn't there, no need to set zero. I was well aware of this, my friends. The block was fully operational, but according to the law of minness, I set these zero amperes. Something slammed and the unit turned off. The fuses blew. After replacing them, they blew again. I quickly opened it and realized that the problem was in the converter transistors. I replaced them, but the unit burned out again, this time taking a few other components to the grave. The fact is that at the first explosion or at the opening, the wire came off inside, but I didn't notice. In any case, everything was repaired on the second attempt. From the factory, there were transistors KT841 replaced by MJE1309. Don't pay attention to the extremely poor quality of the repair. I did it for myself and quickly, that says it all. It would be time to replace all the electrolytes here, but I'm still too lazy. On the front, we have a toggle switch, output terminals, ground terminal, operation mode indicators, current or voltage stabilization based on incandescent bulbs. And this is an indicator and at the same time a current and voltage regulator. Working is actually unusual but cool. By the way, the output terminals are duplicated, which is very convenient. Behind a pair of mains fuses of 3 amperes, there is also a remote control connector. Now a short advertisement. Tired of home PCB technology? Or your PCB isn't as beautiful as you'd like? 
Company GLC will produce for you boards of any complexity and size. The minimum cost of a batch of 10 by 10 cm starts at $2, and the price doesn't change depending on the chosen color. Fast delivery, convenient payment methods, and the highest level quality are guaranteed. Feel free to order PCB, SMT, and Stancil. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description below the video. The case is completely duraluminium, weight 9 kg. There are holes for cooling throughout the case, unit made almost entirely on military acceptance components. The source can provide voltage regulation from 0.1 to 29.9 volts and current from 10 mA to 2.99 amps. Adjustment of current and voltage is stepwise provided by switching the bits of the indicator on the front panel. Adjustment of current is in steps of 10 mA and voltage of 100 mV. If in the case of voltage it is clear that the switch shows the actual value of the output voltage, then in the case of current it shows the limiting current, while the effective output current may be different, so that there is no real-time output current indicator. This is bad. In fairness, it should be noted that the effective output current can be recognized with an accuracy of 10 mA. To do this, we connect the load and reduce the set current until the stabilization mode is triggered. In the constant current mode, the actual output current is equal to the set value. Although this method of setting current and voltage solves two problems, both a regulator and an indicator at the same time, but both as a regulator and as an indicator aren't fully fledged and about convenience is also doubtful. It's quite stable and accurate both in current and voltage. The instability of the output voltage when mains changes by plus minus 10% less than 0.01%, the current less than 0.05%, the maximum power consumption from mains is 400 volt amps. What's inside? Looking at the inside, it feels like either geniuses designed it or it was in a drunken stupor. Well, why is it so intricate? This is a whole web of wires, connectors, a bunch of transformers, a bunch of relays. Why? The fact is that initially they wanted to get an energy efficient source with a compact transformer. The case is certainly large, but on the other hand, if it were on an ordinary linear one, then at 30 volts and 3 amps in some modes, 90 watts of power and even more would be dissipated on the power element. This is a lot of heat, believe me. And in order to make a powerful and by all standards compact source which heats up as little as possible, they went to such way by increasing the complexity of the source by 5 to 6 times compared to a similar linear one. As a result, we got an entirely reliable circuit that can be burned by setting either 0 volts or 0 amperes at the output. The unit became musical and noisy, believe me, this is normal for it. But damn it, it's cool, it's very unusual. In the 90s and long before that, they weren't afraid of bold decisions, even if they weren't entirely successful, and apparently they were able to achieve their goal. Inside you can see several transformers, a bank of capacitors, and three main boards. There are a couple of radiators with inverter transistors, there is also a large radiator on which we have a powerful KT825. On the first board you can see 20 read relays, a bunch of resistors and diodes. This board is a digital to analog converter, beautiful and richly varnished. If in the most simple words, then these are relay controlled voltage dividers that set the output current and voltage. On the second board, in fact, are assembled the brains of the device, the comparison and adjustment unit. Here we can see three operational amplifiers, a bunch of transistors and even optics. This board is a small paradise for refiners. Here are KM capacitors and fat gold-plated transistors. But is it worth to break such an interesting device for the sake of some 0.2 grams of gold, an insignificant amount of platinum and palladium? Maybe I'm wrong. 
On the third board is all the control of the inverter, including the galvanic isolation transformer. Everything is assembled according to the military acceptance, transformers are reliably sealed, components are of military acceptance and everything is beautiful. Contacts of all boards may be covered with palladium, taking into account the fact that there are no oxides on them. But the sockets are clearly covered with silver, taking into account blankness, perhaps it is worthwhile to clean. How does it work? I will not go into the wilds of the design, I will tell you as briefly and understandably as possible. 220 volts from mains through the filter goes to a 50 Hz ordinary transformer. It has a bunch of windings for powering all sorts of different nodes and the main working winding from which the voltage is straightened and fed to the inverter transistors. There are two transistors and a pair of capacitors in the inverter and this is a classic half bridge converter. The transistors themselves are controlled by a galvanic isolation transformer, what can I say, very smart. These transistors pump a pulse transformer, the output voltage from which is rectified, and then comes the inductor and capacitors. In general, everything is regular and very modern. Next is the most interesting. In general, the control unit is linear, because everything previously mentioned was done so as not to put a big iron transformer here and slightly soften the mode of operation of the power transistor in the re linear regulator circuit. So, the composite transistor KT825, which sits on that large radiator, is responsible for the main adjustment. Here, despite the linear mode, everything is done quite efficiently. There is a comparison circuit, there is no PWM, but there is a separate generator that controls the converter. Generator, when necessary, can drawn out of the operation of the converter for a moment in order to stabilize the output parameters. In general, the converter itself operates at frequencies of several kilohertz. Since there is no PWM adjustment in the controller as a whole, in order to control the operation of the inverter, the engineers came up with simply turning it off or on at a frequency from 250 hertz to 1 kilohertz. As for voltage and current comparison nodes, then there is nothing new. Monitoring of parameters is carried out by op-amps, there is a reference voltage source. Current monitoring is through a current shunt. In general, everything is quite reasonable and competent. Technical description and instructions. Well, here I have no words. If you want to get a technical speciality in an accelerated mode, read the instructions for Soviet devices. Here, in addition to the characteristics of the device, tolerances, and other things, there are detailed electronic circuits, a description of the principle of operation of the circuit, the theoretical part, the main components, the procedure for operation, the diagnostic procedure, the type of malfunctions and their causes, the complete element base and oscillograms at control points with voltage maps. In general, this is a serious book that is definitely worth reading at your leisure time. Testing. Despite the age of 30 years, this thing has perfect accuracy. In terms of voltage, everything converges exactly up to the lowest digit, 100 millivolt. In terms of current, everything is also very cool here. Well, it's very accurate. The block withstands a short circuit very calmly. True, the sound during operation, it seems that it is about to explode, but no, it still works. It holds a maximum output power of almost 90 Watt. True, the transistors were replaced to different, but I'm sure that there would be no problems with the original ones. Ok, I know you want to see how noisy it is and what are the ripples level at the output. Let's look. 
But in support of the engineers who created the device, I will say the following. Don't forget that it is 30 years old and the state of electrolytes is possibly deplorable and whatever you see here, you shouldn't believe it. You must trust what is written in the instructions because people much smarter than me took readings there and at a time when the device was still new. With a maximum current of 3 amperes at current stabilization mode, the RMS value of the voltage ripple is about 7 mV. The peak value isn't more than 7 to 75 mV. These parameters are quite decent given the age of the device. Not every average modern power supply can compete with it in terms of setting accuracy and output voltage ripple. Well, at the end of my impressions about this device. I have never hidden that I really appreciate all technology and this device is no exception. I immediately fell in love with it. Yes, it squeaks and if you work at home, especially at night, your family will kick you out of the house in a couple of minutes. But in my case, there is no one in the workshop except me. Certainly, it is outdated by today's standards. Maybe it was an innovative solution in the 90s, but the principle itself, as you can see, didn't take root. It's much more convenient to adjust everything with knobs or an encoder, and buttons are generally gorgeous. Modern laboratory sources may be much more complex in design than this dinosaur, but there is some zest in it. It may not be very convenient in terms of repair, but the main understanding is that it was done a long time ago, when many of us were not born yet. It was made by a man, edge wiring, each component is soldered by hand. Of course, you can take the body from it, throw out all the insides and make the block much cooler, but I won't touch it. Maybe I will replace the capacitors and that's all. It was bought purely for nostalgic reasons, so it will remain almost in factory condition. This video is coming to an end. Please don't forget to rate it and visit my other resources. All links you need can be found in the description. Now I say bye. Until we meet again. As always with you was Kassian TV.